So let's take a look at the window sticker on this specific truck. So this truck has a base price of $58,995, but as spec'd out, this truck is $73,720. Believe it or not, that is a bargain for this truck. What I mean by that is you can probably negotiate a significant amount off of this price and probably get into this truck for the mid to low 60s, which makes this truck probably the best bargain of any of the heavy duty trucks available by any of the manufacturers, easily outspecking Ford for the price. So my truck carried about an $85,000 price tag. I got into my truck for after negotiation for the high 70s. This specific truck starts at the low 70s and you can even work down from there. And this is a limited package. So yes, it does not have the high output Cummins engine or the Ison transmission, which would add roughly about $3,000 to that price. So it would put it in the $76,000 price range. However, even at that price range, you're not gonna be able to get a comparably equipped Ford for that. You would have to go well above that price range. The GM side, you may get a truck for roughly the same price, but you're not gonna get the technology or the feature packages that you'll get in the Ram, which really, again, makes the Ram the best buy. On this specific truck, you'll see that it has the 68 RFE transmission, and then they duplicate that over here, 68 RFE with the 342 axle ratio. Again, it does have the 6.7 Cummins engine in it, which is an $8,700 upgrade to this truck. This truck is all body match colored, so both front and rear bumpers are paint matched to the truck. Has a 17-inch wheel package because, of course, it is a dually truck. Has a lot of really, really nice features built into it, including Google Android, Apple CarPlay. Has an 8.4-inch Uconnect display. And again, I really, really like the infotainment system on the Ram. It's just very easy to work with. It's very easy to navigate. There is very little lag to it at all. It gives you really, really crisp lettering. Everything's really easy to see, has really good contrast between the letters and the screen itself. And it puts a lot on the screen, which in some cases can be confusing to some folks, but I think they do it really well because everything is really well labeled. So I really enjoy how they've developed this system. And then below the center stack, you see all of the upgraded features. And as you see, there are no empty spaces here. This truck has virtually every feature you can imagine. Heated seats, ventilated seats, seats, heated steering wheel, it has front parking sensors, rear parking sensors, it has a button here to turn them on and off. That is something I wish Ford would do, mainly because when you are backing your truck up to let's say a fifth wheel or when I get back into the RV area and I go to put my truck in reverse, I really hate it when my parking sensors start going crazy. On this one, it's really simple, you simply turn them on or off right here from the center, and you don't have to go through a bunch of menus on your dash like you do with Ford. Now Ford has tried to make it a little simpler. When you put it in reverse, let's say your tailgate's down and your parking sensors are screaming at you, you have the option instantly appear on your dash where you can just turn off your parking sensors. And that's been a feature that's been available for quite some time now, I think since about 20, I think since about 2010. However, I really like having the two buttons right here because it lets you just instantly turn them off or on without having to go through menus when you're not currently backing up. So that's really nice. Some other things, I really like the fact that they give you a volume knob here as well as your tuning knob. You don't have buttons to have to control that, which make it a lot easier to navigate around. Plus your fan speed control. I love having a knob for that. I do not like the two buttons where it's an up and down to control your fan speed like in my Ford. I like on this truck where it actually gives you a physical knob you can use to control your fan speed for air conditioning. That's really nice as well. They put their trailer brake control in a really nice area with the gain. Um, GM puts theirs on the left side of the steering wheel, so you have to reach around to this area to control your trailer brakes, whereas on both Ford and Ram, they put it on this side, which I think is a better setup. Most people that I see generally drive with their left hand and they control everything else with their right hand simply because you're kind of trained to do that because of how your radio and controls are, and to have the controls here makes a lot of sense to me. Push button start, again, Ram has been doing that for some time. Ford recently entered that game and GM still does not offer push button start on any of their high-end pickup trucks. You also have electronic two and four wheel drive as well as rear locking differential on the specific truck. So similar to GM, the steps on the side of these trucks are a little bit taller 
than most. So the step up's a little high, but it's not bad. It's not quite as bad as GM. GM puts theirs about here. So you're still a little bit lower. It's actually a usable or a functional step, which is nice when you're getting into these really tall new trucks. Let's take a look at the interior. Really nice floor mats. Soft touch dash material. The seats in this truck are really, really nice. Gives you a nice leather care guide here. You can see the embroidery on the actual seats themselves. Similar to the Laramie Longhorn, but it's more of a black embroidery instead of that brown color that you see. All black interior. See the nice limited badging here. Seats are very, very comfortable in this truck, and you can see how thick they are. Very well bolstered, very well padded. You can see up here, this has the 150 watt, 115 volt outlet. You have a nice nifty phone holder right here that you prop your phone into and then you can charge it. Big tray up here. Big glove box. I like this area right here as well. This is one area that Ford does not do a good job. And it's really equipping the driver with a nice workstation area to conduct business or to put things that are readily available. All of your USB ports right here as well as your auxiliary in. One thing that I noticed about this truck, which I actually like, no sunroof. I am not a big fan of sunroofs. My specific truck has one, but it's not really something I wanted. And unfortunately, I really didn't have a choice because I wasn't able to custom order my truck. It was one of the few 450s that was available. And it has this big panoramic sunroof that I really don't care to have. But this truck does not have one, which would be a feature that I wouldn't want. Now going into the back of this truck, in typical high-end Ram fashion, they put these really nice saddlebags on the back of the truck. You have a lot of leg space here, leg support, when you sit in the back seat of a Ram. There's still quite a bit of room back here as well. So the driver's seat is currently in my comfortable seating position. It's not quite as spacious as the back of a new Super Duty. However, you get a little bit more leg support and you still have plenty of room to sit in this truck. Um, I could easily sit in the back of one of these trucks and not have any problem with my knees hitting the front. Here's the back. This truck has heated seats in the back plus a 12 volt outlet back here. Your cup holders on the Ram are down here. Has nice tall headrests just like the Ford does. GM still uses the real short ones. They use it for better visibility, which I can see helping. But I think for the most part, your rear passengers appreciate having these larger, well bolstered headrests. Seats are very nice. Once again, they have this custom embroidery here. One thing that I really like about Ram is that they put these nice cup holders that are flush. So when you have your arm here using this as an armrest, you don't have this piece sticking up like you see on some GMC trucks or GM trucks in general. Now getting in on the driver's side, I'm gonna show you something here I always seem to forget when I look at these trucks. The seats flip up and this piece flips out to make a flat surface, so you simply fold these out, and then you can flip this over. A lot of people who use these trucks for uh, hot shot work or for towing long distances, they'll actually turn this back area into a sleeper berth. And both of them fold out to make it completely flat. Now another nice hidden gem of the Ram trucks, when these are up, is their storage underneath them. So you have this storage compartment underneath this area. So when all this decking's down, you technically have storage for other things underneath them. So even though the Ford is completely flat across the back and it doesn't have the hump here, you don't have necessarily any type of storage underneath unless you build some type of platform up. Whereas on the Ram, it inherently gives you storage underneath these when they're folded out flat and even under the seat. And under these floor mats, you even have additional storage. And this isn't necessarily storage as much as it is a cooler box. And you can keep drinks and other things like that. In this case, they have the receiver reducer in here. But it's really nice, and these can come out as well so you can clean them. Very nice feature on the RAM. It's also a good place if you want to store your keys or anything that you don't want someone to have ready access to if they get into your truck.
really nice. A key way of knowing if you have a RAM or if you're looking at a RAM with an ISIN transmission and a high output Cummins is if this rear differential cover has fins on it. So if it does not have fins, if it's this specific differential cover, the smooth one that you see, then it generally means it has a 68 RFE transmission. Good look at the bottom side of this truck. You can see that the truck has four main leafs with two thin overload leafs, very similar to how GM does their trucks. Very clean under here. It's hard to do frame thickness comparisons anymore just because most of the frames are all the same thickness now. They're using pretty much the same thickness gauge material and high strength steel on all these frames across all the manufacturers. They've gone to a thinner material than their open C channel, but it is high strength steel now and it's fully boxed. So even though it is optional to get a high output Cummins on this truck that has 930 pound-feet of torque and 385 horsepower, this specific model has 370 horsepower and 800 pound-feet of torque when equipped with the 68 RFE transmission. So, and that's for 2018 as well. That's kind of been the way they've been doing it going back. If we were to opt for the Ison transmission again on this truck, it would automatically bump us up to the high output Cummins engine. We'd be at 930 pound-feet of torque and 385 horsepower. But again, more than enough power even with the 370 horsepower and 800 pound-feet of torque. I know a lot of people are going to say, if you're going to pay this much for a truck, why wouldn't you just opt for the truck with more horsepower and torque? It all comes down to fuel economy and the gear ratio. With the 342 gear ratio on this truck, it's going to give you a mile or two or maybe even three when it comes to fuel economy. Let's give you a quick close-up of the engine compartment of this truck with this beautiful sounding Cummins running. Dual batteries, one here and one on the opposite side. people really like these Cummins because they're a lot easier to work on. They actually give you some space around the engine versus the Ford or even the Duramax which really don't give you much room to work on. Here's the back of the truck. You can see the huge Ram logo. I really like this chrome accent they put here where it says limited four-wheel drive, paint matched rear bumper, again parking sensors. Beautiful, beautiful color. Coming around the side again. You know, I really have never cared for the look of these little gills they put here on the side. But on this specific truck in this specific color, I think they look pretty good. Honestly, this is a gorgeous looking truck with this red paint job. All monotone. This would probably be the truck, but with an Ison, that I would have gotten if I hadn't have gotten my Super Duty. Very, very nice. You know me, I like getting shots. Most people don't. Front suspension, solid axle. Here's another shot of the front suspension. I even like how they paint matched these to the truck. Looks really nice on both the front and the back. Nice Alcoa 17-inch aluminum wheels. I think these are better looking wheels than what come on the F350. A 
I've heard rumors that they're gonna be moving away from this style mirror, which folds up like this into towing mode. Basically, the one thing that I really, really don't care for on Ram trucks is this mirror. And they're gonna be going to one that looks upright like this, but slides in and out, which would be a huge, huge upgrade to this truck and one of the few things that I believe they've needed to do for some time. In case you're wondering about the headlights on this truck, it uses a halogen bulb. It's a bi-halogen bulb, so it's both the high beam and low beam. Your LED turn signal right here, and the back is all LEDs as well. The entire tail light is LED except for the reverse light, which is halogen. This truck is not equipped with a slow opening tailgate or the puck system in the bed for a fifth wheel, which you can add, but it does have a very lightweight tailgate, so it's very easy to open and close without having to fuss with it. And here is the rear leaf spring setup. Once again, four main leaves, two small overload leaves, fully boxed frame. You can see where they add reinforcement to the fully boxed frame sections around any structural areas. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick review of this 2018 Ram limited edition dually pickup truck. Just a beautiful truck. Um, really enjoyed driving this thing. And again, this is just a great value for the type of truck that you're gonna get. And with all the equipment, all the amenities, especially in a limited package. Anyways guys, if you enjoyed my videos, please subscribe to my channel. Take a moment, I really enjoy making these videos, but I couldn't do it without my subscribers. Give me a thumbs up and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. I really wanna take a moment to thank Lithia Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram in Corpus Christi, Texas for allowing me to do these reviews. They've been very cooperative and they simply allow me to take the vehicle out and do the tests and reviews I'd like without any sales reps or anybody trying to you know, pressure me to say anything. So really appreciate that about working with these guys.